go. All right, sorry for the uh, uh, interruption. So uh, I'm going to talk about prior independent mechanisms, and this is joint work with uh, Ingbao Taugam from Stanford and Tim. All right, so what is a mechanism? A mechanism is basically an algorithm that's uh, incentive compatible. So let's take the single item bakery auction as an example, which is also called as the uh, second price auction. So the input of the auctions are basically bids from bidders, which indicate how much they are willing to pay for the item. And then the output will consist of uh, who wins and what she pays. So in the victory auction context, the highest bidder wins, and she's going to pay the, uh, the second highest bid. So to be a bit more concrete, let's say uh, bidder A and B and C, they bid uh, $3, $2, $1 uh, respectively. Then uh, bidder A is going to win, and he's going to pay the, uh, he's gonna, uh, she's going to get uh, the value $3, and uh, she's going to pay the second highest bid, which is $2. And the net utility will be 3 minus 2, which equals to $1. So it turns out that uh, this victory auction is incentive compatible or truthful in the sense that for every bidder, reporting the true value that he, she has for the item maximizes utility. And in general, if an algorithm is incentive compatible, we call it a, as a mechanism. So we study different objectives in mechanism design, um, commonly welfare and revenue. So welfare is the value that's achieved by the mechanism, which is $3 in this case. And the revenue is the payment we collect from the uh, from this auction, and which is two dollar in this case. So these two are in general different objectives. For example, the victory auction is optimal for the welfare because three dollar is the maximum you can get, but uh, it's not optimal for revenue. For example, you can get uh, slightly better revenue by a posted price auction, which offer like two point five dollars uh, to the uh, to the bidders one by one. And in general, revenue is a more challenging goal to uh, study, and it's going to be the focus of this talk. Uh, so the question is, why is mechanism design interesting to computer scientists? Uh, one reason is that mechanisms are basically incentive-compatible algorithms, which can, in some sense, be proved to be equivalent to algorithms that satisfy certain martinistic condition. So in some sense, mechanism design is really similar uh, to algorithm design. Uh, what I think makes this even more interesting is how mechanism design is different from algorithm design. So mechanism design has been uh, commonly, traditionally studied by economists who have very successfully applied average case analysis. On the other hand, uh, algorithm has been studied by us and uh, we usually use worst case analysis. So what does this difference mean? I think it means two things. So first, uh, we can learn from econ economists' success in, in applying the average case analysis. And the other way around, we can also contribute with more robust mechanisms. Okay, so uh, we want to advocate this prior independent approximation analysis framework, but before I introduce it, let me further compare average case analysis and worst case analysis. So these two analysis frameworks seem to be very different. They are like two extremes of, of some spectrum. And I think what underlies this huge difference is this central conflict <clears throat> between optimality and robustness. You can never get both. And let me elaborate on that. So let's first look at average case analysis. So uh, usually you assume that the input are drawn from some prior distribution. And uh, given this distribution information, you want to uh, find a mechanism that maximizes the revenue in expectation, uh, uh, find a mechanism that maximizes the expected revenue where this expectation is over distribution. And uh, Myerson's seminal work basically characterized what, what the optimal mechanism is that's, that maximizes this expected revenue for any, in, uh, for any particular uh, distribution. So we can achieve exact optimality for this average case context. But the problem is that uh, uh, it's not super robust because the optimal mechanism has to uh, be highly dependent on the distribution. But on the other hand, the prior distribution information can be inaccurate. It can change over time. And sometimes it's just not available to us. So now let's look at worst case analysis. And, uh, we really want robustness, so we have no distribution at all. And then the guarantee we look for is the following kind. We look for the mechanisms such that point-wise for every input, 
for every input evaluations, the revenue of our mechanism is a constant factor approximation to some suitably defined revenue benchmark. So it's really robust because the approximation guarantee uh, should hold point-wise. But on the other hand, it's not very optimal because due to this uh, pessimistic nature of uh, worst case analysis, the ratio we get uh, is often very bad uh, because of some pathological examples. So apparently it's hard to get both. It's hard to get both optimality and robustness. So uh, we want to advocate this prior independence framework which try to balance the two extremes. We want to have a more balanced middle ground. And uh, to get this middle ground, what we did was basically to take the worst case part from worst case analysis and then combine it with the distribution part of average case analysis. And together we get this prior independent approximation. So uh, this uh, prior independent approximation framework was uh, implicit in Hotline Rough Garden's papers and we made it more explicit in a follow-up paper. So what is prior independent approximation? The assumption is the following. We assume there is a distribution, but we don't know what it is. In particular, the mechanism should, should, should not have knowledge about the distribution. Or in other words, uh, the input values or bids are drawn from some unknown distribution. Uh, but our benchmark is uh, still quite strong. We want to compare with the optimal mechanism that's tailored for this distribution, which also maximizes the expected revenue for this distribution. That's our benchmark. And the guarantee we want is the following. We, we want that the expected revenue of our mechanism is a constant factor approximation to the optimal expected revenue. And note that on the left-hand side, our mechanism should have no knowledge about the distribution. And on the right-hand side, the optimal mechanism is tailored for distribution. And uh, uh, in other words, we want this approximation guarantee to be true, uh, independent of the prior. That's why we call it prior independent approximation. So we claim that this achieves a better trade-off between uh, optimality and the robustness. So it's reasonably optimal. It's not exactly optimal, but uh, it's approximately optimal, usually with good ratio. And it's reasonably robust. It's not robust point-wise, but uh, it's robust with respect to uh, distributions. OK, that's the prior independent approximation framework. So we have defined uh, an analysis framework. It's useless unless we, uh, we use it to study concrete problems. And this is the problem we study, a matching problem. It's a pretty natural problem. So we want to allocate n items to n bidders. And uh, uh, essentially, the alloc an allocation corresponds to a matching, because each item can go to at most one bidder, and uh, each bidder only wants one item, at most one item. And we assume that uh, each bidder has different values for different items. And all these values are drawn IID, let's say for simplicity. Uh, they are drawn IID from some regular distribution. So we are making this average case assumption. And then our objective is to maximize the expected revenue. And uh, again, our benchmark is the optimal mechanism. The optimal mechanism that's tailored for this distribution, which maximizes the uh, expected revenue. So what was known about this problem before? And uh, economists look at it, and then they give up, because uh, the optimal mechanism turned out to be too complicated to characterize. And uh, economists never give up anything for optimality. They, do not, they don't give up optimality for anything. And uh, in a recent paper by Chola et al., they showed that there is a 6.75 approximation, uh, which is prior independent. This is a very great result. But also, but still, this mechanism depends on the prior. And so it's not very robust. We want to be more robust than that. So here's our main result. We consider the following very simple mechanism. We call it the supply halving VCG mechanism. So we, f we first make this commitment that we only sell at most half of the items. And then we just run the VCG mechanism to maximize welfare. So we find the allocation that maximizes total value and charge the corresponding payment. And that's it. That's the mechanism. It might appear to be a bit strange, because this VCG mechanism is usually uh, optimized for welfare, while here, our true goal is to optimize for expected revenue. So uh, this is the intuition of why this should work. So intuitively, we, uh, we have an artificial uh, limit on the supply of items, 
which should drive, drive up the uh, competition among bidders for the items. And uh, as a result of this competition, the prices will be driven up and so we get better revenue. That's roughly the intuition of uh, why, why it should work. And it turns out that uh, this mechanism also gives us a prior independent two approximation. So the theorem is the following. For this matching problem, the expected revenue of the supplies halving uh, VCG mechanism is a half approximation to the optimal expected revenue. And again, I want to emphasize that uh, this supply halving VCG mechanism, it doesn't even try to look at what the distribution is. And on the other hand, the optimal mechanism is really tailored for this distribution. Okay, uh, this theorem is not easy to prove, uh, but interestingly, to prove this theorem, we first need to prove a resource augmentation theorem. So what's resource augmentation? Uh, as Suzanne talked about yesterday, it's a common technique that's applied in uh, paging and scheduling. So basically, you give your own algorithm a little bit more power so that at the end, the guarantee you achieve can be more meaningful or informative. So what is resource in our context? It could be either bidders or items, and we pick bidders to be the uh, resource. So what's augmentation? It just means to get more bidders, um, and of course from the same distribution. Then our resource augmentation theorem is the following. So if you start with n bidders and n items, instead of running the optimal mechanism on the left-hand side, what you can instead, uh, instead uh, doing is to get n more bidders so that you have two n bidders in total and then run the simpler VCG mechanism. And uh, doing this, you get uh, uh, only better revenue. And that's the resource augmentation theorem. And again, this is not easy to prove, but uh, in this slide, I'm, I'm gonna show you a, a simple reduction, which basically says that if you wanna prove a, a prior independent approximation, it's sufficient to prove this resource augmentation theorem. And uh, actually, this reduction is pretty simple in general, and it works for a lot of problems. So how does it go? And uh, the key is to uh, reinterpret this supply halving mechanism as doing a three-step procedure. We first restrict and then expand and then run VCG. So what do I mean by that? So originally we had n bidders and n items. We first restrict, we restrict to, be, uh, to consider only half of the bidders and half of the items. Then start, starting from this restricted setting, we add back the, uh, the, the half of the bidders that we removed so that we again get n bidders and, uh, and over two items. Note that the expansion step, the step, this step is basically resource augmentation. Finally, we run VCG. And clearly, if you compare the uh, expanded uh, setting to the original setting, the number of items is halved. So essentially, this is the same as the supply halving VCG mechanism. So if you set it up this way, then the uh, two approximations should follow pretty straightforwardly. So in the restriction step, by a subadditivity claim, we can show that the optimal revenue is hurt by at the most a factor of two. Then in the expansion step and the VCG step, by our previous resource augmentation theorem, uh, VCG uh, on the expanded setting is uh, as good as the uh, optimal in the restricted setting uh, for expected revenue. And finally, VCG on expanded setting is the same as the supply halving VCG set, uh, setting. So if you chain these inequalities together, you get that the supply halving VCG it gives a two approximation to the uh, optimal uh, setting for uh, the, to the optimal for the original setting, and uh, that's the proof for the resource augmentation theorem. Then you plug this into the reduction, you, you get that uh, the supply halving mechanism is a uh, two approximation. All right. To summarize. Uh, the prior independent approximation is a good trade-off between optimality and robustness, and uh, we think it's a balanced middle ground between the worst case analysis and the average case analysis. We applied it to a matching problem, and uh, uh, we, we were quite happy that uh, the result we get, the solution we get, is a very simple and natural one. So you just half the supply and then run the welfare maximizing mechanism. And the guarantee is a prior independent two, approxim uh, two approximation, which was proved using a resource augmentation claim. Uh, let me just conclude by saying that uh, prior independence has great potential in mechanism design and uh, um, maybe more generally in algorithm design as well. All right, that's the end of my talk. Thank you. <laughs> time for a quick question. Uh, you might have mentioned, what's the regular uh, distribution? Uh, it's a 
it's a technical definition, but you can, but at least it, uh, for example, all log concave distributions are regular. So it's a pretty wide class of uh, distributions.